I was driving t- to work today, and I was crossing the bridge on Washington Street over uh, Rock Creek uh, Canyon. And some of you may know that during the winter, you sometimes see scarves and gloves that are or mittens that are tied there for people who are homeless and cold in the community. And then somebody told me the other day that a lot of our homeless actually try to go south for the winter because they're looking for a warmer place to be. But if you've got homelessness, that also means you have hunger. And a lot of people over the last have had their lives terribly disrupted over the last two years uh, since uh, the beginning of the pandemic. And but, but it existed really before any of that happened anyway. And we're joined this morning by Aaron Scott. Hmm. And he's a pastor at uh, Twin Falls Community Church. And uh, he's, he got in touch with me the other day to talk about an effort they're making uh, here in this valley to try to feed hungry people. And I uh, want to mention we're about five minutes after 9 o'clock. It's 41 on News Radio 961 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. Uh, welcome back. No, well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Doctor, you were, you were mentioning, of course, the last time you were here was on the panel of Pastors Roundtable, oh, stirring that. up some trouble. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love those guys. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the effort you're involved with is pretty widespread by the sounds of things. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, God really just kind of plopped something in our, our laps. Uh, and, and, and we're a baby church. We just started in May. So, uh, yeah, to talk about it, um, we, uh, we've we been praying as a church for um, opportunities to serve three particular communities. Uh, first, the refugee community. Second, the foster care system and foster care families. And then third, the public school system in whatever way we can. So as a church, we've been praying that. <clears throat> and sometimes you, you pray and uh, God answers in a long uh, waiting. It, you just got to wait for it. And sometimes he answers in really big ways. Um, and this time he answered in a really big way because uh, I got a phone call last Tuesday uh, from a pastor friend <clears throat> who's connected to an, a missions organization called the North American Mission Board. And he said, Aaron, are you sitting down? And, and I said, uh, yeah, I mean, why? He's like, I got something that uh, you're going to want to sit down for. And and I said, okay, so okay, sat down. And he said, Aaron, uh, someone from the South, actually in Oklahoma, an anonymous donor just donated um, 1,800 food boxes to your church. Uh, he said specifically to a church plant, a, a small church that's just starting up uh, in Twin Falls, Idaho, that's partnering with the North American Mission Board. But super specific because uh, we're the only ones doing that. <laughs> and uh, and so <clears throat> I said, well, great. Uh, it, first of all, 1,800 food boxes, that's not a small number. And we, we have 17 members in our new new church. And so a, kind of a big gulp there. I sat, you know, I'm glad I was sitting down. And then my mind immediately went to, hey, this is a direct answer to prayer. The Lord didn't just open a small door into those communities. Now he's opening the floodgates to be able to serve each of those communities in a time of year where um, it's super important to be able to feed families uh, during the holidays. So Distribution is the next challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grateful to, to grateful for friendships. Uh, um, Paul Thompson's on here, his church, he side's helping us. Um, Mike Littleton's a dear friend of mine um, with Taproot, Pastor Taproot. Uh, they're helping us send in volunteers, um, and then um, David Graham, Pastor David Graham at First Baptist, his church is, is um, also volunteering. A couple other churches, one in Burley, um, uh, Pastor Dave Carver with um, Water's Edge Fellowship, new church plant. Everyone's kind of coming together to make this happen. It's neat because, actually, I, I found in just the year and a half being here that the— uh, I think the Christian community here is pretty fractured, and there's not a lot of collaboration when it comes to caring for people or or helping. And so I'm just, it's also an answer to prayer because we've been, as a congregation, praying for each one of these churches. Um, and a way that God is answering that prayer is he's bringing us all together to collaborate in this. Now, effort. do people come and pick this up, or how, how does it how does it work? Yeah, distribution. Good good question. Uh, yeah, every Monday from eleven to two o'clock, beginning November twenty second. Actually, with the exception of the week after Thanksgiving, it'll be Tuesday uh, from eleven to two because distribution couldn't happen over that weekend. Right. Um, but yeah, from eleven to two. If if you have uh, if you feel like you could use a food box, what will be in the box is um, milk and yogurt and produce. We'll be at the Magic Valley Mall <clears throat> over by uh, Old Shopco 
and um, where the where the farmers market meets regularly. Um, and so we uh, will be there handing out food boxes um, in partnership with all those churches. So weather is going to be irrelevant. Whatever the weather is, you'll be doing it. Well, yep, right. Yep, no matter what, we'll be out there. So the first uh, the first effort is going to be this coming Monday. You're only three days away. Yes, that's right. Yep, and and we only found out about this opportunity you know, a week, week and a half ago. So it's been um, a lot of groundwork immediately. How many so, weeks do you plan to carry it on? Six weeks. Yeah, it's all the way through the end of the year. So um, if you want to mark your calendars, November 22nd uh, and November 30th, December 6th, December 13th, December 20th, and December 27th, all from 11 o'clock in the morning until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, or while supplies last, you know. Um, so we're hoping to get it out to all those communities. Before I pick this conversation up again, just a quick traffic note. Uh, Highway 93 is closed at 100 South in Jerome County uh, due to an accident. So if you're looking for a quick a shot perhaps across the bridge this morning, you may have to find a detour. Um, that will happen when the weather sometimes turns a little south on us. Uh, when, when people, you know, you mentioned six weeks, but thought struck me as you were bringing that up. Yeah. Th- and this comes from the generosity of someone in Oklahoma. However, mm-hmm. uh, if people are listening to this and think, well, okay, after six weeks, I'd like to help help out. Could we start seeing this maybe happen on a regular basis beyond that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, church collaboration would be great. Um, and, you know, I think the first, frankly, the first step I think you should do is if you want to help, then you need to pray. And and uh, we firmly believe um, God answers big prayers. Um, Ephesians 3 says um, God is a really big God, and he, he, he does things that are above and beyond what we can ask or think. And so if if someone wants to help, first I would say you need to pray and ask God to do some work. And then and then second, if you want to continue to help, there's several first approach your church, your local church, we're one of them. Um, and then um, ask your pastor how how to how to collaborate and then start start working on it yourself. Um, pa- pastor Aaron Scott uh, joining us this morning and I do want to mention we're 12 minutes after nine o'clock it's 39. On Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 961 FM 1310 KLIX and 1310.com with Bill Colley. You mentioned the fractious, uh, fractious nature sometimes of the church community in Twin Falls. Yeah. Now, part of that is, is I saw a writer a few years ago who wrote a story about Twin Falls from out of town and said, the sprawl that is known as Twin Falls, <laughs> number one, it, it is it is for a rather small city still. It's got a huge footprint. Mm-hmm. Number two, um, you have a lot of newcomers here, and I think that's part of the reason it might be fractious. Mm-hmm. Where I grew up in a small town, you know, with just a couple of thousand people, you've got, and there were seven churches, and they were all located within about three blocks of each other. Yeah. So, and 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 and, and there was not a lot of out migration, and certainly wasn't much in migration. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty standard, and everyone obviously, you know, had that connection. Yeah. But it's that nature of the way society moves now that people are constantly on the go, and mm-hmm. so many newcomers here. Uh, it's, if they do find a church, once they're in that church, it's still difficult for them to connect with other people because, again, you're relatively new. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I think uh, part of it has to do with, uh, you know, actually one of the main reasons why we moved to Twin Falls is because of how domestic migration is, is taking place. I mean, Idaho has been the fastest growing state for a while and uh, competing with with Utah a little bit, but we're, we're um, growing leaps and bounds. And so... How do you develop a community uh, when you're new to the community? Well, I, I think it's important the basics. Get to know your neighbor, have them over for have them over Thanksgiving, you know, and 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 open your home to the people that just moved into your area. Um, there's a book we've been reading as a church called The Art of Neighboring, and basically, how do you love your neighbor as yourself, like Jesus tells us, and um, and I think it's I think that's super important, and it ties to the same question you just asked me a few minutes ago is um, if someone wants to give beyond the the um, holiday season, well, pray, but ask your neighbor. Look to serve your neighbor and love your neighbor as yourself. One other aspect that comes up in this, too, is you know, mentioned that, that the refugee center is involved in this program, too. Mm-hmm. And I know that there will be some people who say, well, why do we want to do that? And, yeah. and, you know, and, and why would you want to feed people who are here perhaps illegally as immigrants, too? Mm. Uh, but churches don't enforce laws like that. Uh, that they, your mission is a bit broader. Yeah, you know, I, I think you can get mixed up in some of the politics there. Um, I I would tend to separate out uh, illegal immigration and and refugee right. quite quite distinctly. 
I, I definitely believe in due process. Um, I mean, frankly, all of almost all of us are, are migrants here, but I, I, uh, I, I think that to me as a as a Christian, uh, a lot of churches are sending resources overseas to do missions overseas. And the way that I look at it is actually, um, while God calls us to go to the nations, He's actually brought the nations to our doorsteps. And a lot of times, uh, Christians are are just ignorant of the fact that that person that's walking down the street that that may look differently than I is actually my neighbor that I'm called to reach for Christ. And so uh, it's a it's a shift in uh, in 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 thinking is, man, I I get to serve that person rather than that person uh, doesn't belong here. Well, again, if someone shows up at your church, you reference the doorstep. Yeah. And they're hungry and they're cold. You're not asking them what their ethnicity is. You're mm-hmm. not asking them what their legal status is. You're not asking them where they came from, no. who they voted for, who they didn't vote for. None of that is part of this. No, uh, exactly. Um, and frankly, that's Ephesians 2. The Bible talks a lo- about the Christian community being a multi-ethnic uh, congregation, a-, a group of people from every tribe and tongue and nation. And that's the way that it'll be in heaven. And that's the- you get... If you want to see a small taste of what heaven is, looks like, you should. It should look like the local church. Well, you know, you've been a participant on Pastors Roundtable, and one of the things I've learned just as a listener to that program, which I primarily am, yeah, <laughs> is that, is that uh, there's a, there's a great many things that we miss, uh, people miss on. I think when they realize what they're called to be as Christians. Yeah, and and so again, I have certain views when it does come to. Certain people say, well, maybe we should have better vetted them, or maybe we should have a stronger border. But on the other hand, I realize that once more, if I found someone who was bleeding in, in the street, mm-hmm. uh, I'm supposed to help them. Uh, yeah. And, and I'm, not, I'm not supposed to say, well, I don't, don't like the way you came into this country and walk away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you're referencing uh, the uh, parable of the um, Good Samaritan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and yeah, I, I think that is super important. Uh, First is it First John talks about uh, if I see my brother and having need and 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 I shut my heart of compassion toward him, um, the love of God doesn't dwell in you actually. And but there's a balance I think that a lot a lot of times people have a heart to help as 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 Americans I think we have been blessed with resources and a lot of times Christians and not just Christians, uh, uh, just Americans have a heart to help and sometimes a heart to help can can hurt. The, the and actually create a uh, for lack of a better term a, a um, someone who's dependent on on um, gifts and resources and they and instead of helping up you help you just drive them deeper down and and uh, so loving your neighbor is super important well I know people who've been self-reliant and successful at it their entire lives mm-hmm. God bless them right mm-hmm. but there have been a few times in my life where I've had some what you call glitches uh, Somebody came along and said, we're going to change the format of the radio station. Or someone came <laughs> along and said, the ratings aren't what we want. Or they said, uh, we have to cut expenses and you make too much money. <laughs> uh, there's been all of these things that have happened over the years. And it was really through the help of friends, A, uh, helping me out, you know, whether I had to move mm-hmm. or, um, you know, ensuring that they put me in contact with someone else. So, it's <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not always easy. And, 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 and again, you know, those people, it's wonderful if you've managed to be able to do all of this on your own, and it's and it's what we should all strive for. But we do have to lean on others from time to time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we're we're hoping that happens a little bit um, this this holiday season with our love thy community um, effort at the Magic Ma- Magic Valley Mall. We got a caller looking to reach us, and I'll just caller. You got about thirty seconds before the break, and we'll let the pastor answer or respond following the break. But go ahead. I'll, I'll just say real quick. Uh, nobody would ever accuse me of being on the side of. Uh illegal immigration, but uh, I'm definitely somebody who puts my nose in the good book, and I never heard Jesus say, um, you'll have your blessings as long as you're in Jerusalem legally. But what he did say is if if uh, you didn't help out the poor, the hungry, and whatnot, then it, you were actually offending him, not them. Yeah. So I think us that believe, you know, we need to look past the laws and just help those that are in need. Yeah, that's a, that's a great word. We'll get to that in a moment, uh, a little bit more on that, too. I wanted to mention Pastor Aaron Scott joining us this morning. It's 40. And uh, 20 right now, 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, Bill Colley on Magic Valley this morning. 
on News Radio 96 1 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Pastor Aaron Scott with us this morning, and it's 39 at 924 on News Radio 96 1 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Yeah, I gave, every time I give the temperature out, it seems to drop a couple of degrees. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 the thermometer has a thing against me, I guess. It's 923. Bill Colley on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 96 1 FM. 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You know, getting back to this discussion about, you know, helping people out, uh, uh, and, you know, and it, it, there's, a, there's a, a myriad of ways people could be doing this. Mm. And uh, I, I mentioned this just briefly earlier in the program, but if we could make this somewhat of a permanent outreach yeah. and, uh, and through the valley, uh, I, I know it would be a heavy lift, but it, all it really would take would be just good people out there say, well, I will be the person for the next six weeks who makes this happen. And then, someone else steps in and takes that over from them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it would, uh, it would take a lot of, um, effort and care and, and it would take community community. Like the, the only reason why we, we are able to put this on so quickly is because churches like first Baptist and, 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 um, taproot and, and East side are, are collaborating together to make this happen. And again, it speaks to that fractured nature of our, of our church community. And I think that's why church is coming to get together to work on something like this is really important and valuable to our community. When, when churches aren't working and collaborating together, then man, it's uh, not much gets done. We've got a caller with us and caller you're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Good morning, Bill. This is Brand Ranky, uh, Twin Falls County. Just wanted to, to compliment the pastor for stepping up. It's wonderful to see this happen. And there, last year we did eight food drives like this uh, out here at County West, and it's great to see the collaboration that's happening within the churches to get this done. If there's anything that we can do to assist uh, through the mustard seed, we'd be more than happy to step up to help. If, if, that, if that's necessary, it may not be. You may have plenty of, plenty of uh, ways to be able to get this food out, but I just wanted to compliment the pastor and the work that's happening. So that's kind congratulations. of congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I want to thank you much for the call. They did uh, they did a number of these at uh, County West, and mm. they would start at ten o'clock in the morning, and the traffic would often be lined up, ready to go at five thirty or six. Wow. Yeah. Which shows the need. Yeah, I, I think um, this will. This is our first time that we've been able to do this, and uh, like I said, we're a baby church, so we don't know what's what this is going to look like. You know, we're 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 planning, we're preparing, and we just hope that. We don't have anything left over. <laughs> if, if if someone would like to assist and, and expand or yeah. just help out uh, with distribution, what should they do? Who should yeah. they contact? Uh, my wife is uh, overseeing volunteers right now. She, you should uh, email my wife at escott at twinfallscc.com. No, excuse me, dot org. Uh, and and let her know that you're available to volunteer. If, um, if you would li- like uh, to do um, partner with us. Just you can contact me. My my phone number actually uh, is two zero eight. Sure, you want to do this? I'm fine with that. Yeah, this it's two zero eight six one three three two one three. Um, you can give me a call and and uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, but yeah, uh, we're grateful for the partnership and 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 excited to see what God is going to do in in caring for our community. And 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 if we have food left over, we're we're looking to kind of um partner with a couple different people. There's actually someone from Pocatello who's working with the um, uh, foster care system who's driving a van down here, and we're going to try to reserve them an entire pallet because there's 70 uh, pallets coming. No, 26 pallets with 70 boxes of food on each, so 1,800 boxes of food. Where would someone find Twin Falls Community Church? And you mentioned it's relatively new. Yeah, yeah. It's um, We are meeting currently in the um, evening uh, at, in the building of First Baptist Church uh, off Shoshone Street. Uh, it's got a big playground next door, too. Yes, yeah. yeah. Pa- Pastor David has been very gracious uh, to let us meet there, and, and he's doing letting us meet there for free. And it's it's been very... Um, it's, it's encouraging, very kind. But we meet from 5.30 until about 7 o'clock. We have child... Um, ministry, children's ministry, and um, you know, just a, a tight-knit, loving community already. Yeah. He's a Texan, by the way. Yeah, I know. I, I see him, his big truck driving through, and it says <laughs> it says Lone Star, and he's a uh, proud Marine dad. Yeah, yeah. And he's a he looks like he could be a Marine, too. Yes, yes. He's, 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 not, he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
grateful for him. And and again, you mentioned you were up to fifteen hundred people now in the congregation. No, <laughs> I wish. No, we have fifth. We have more like fifteen. We have, we just voted in our seven seventeenth member last night. So we just started in May. But see, I had one of my former school teachers. He started a church mm -hmm. uh, before he went into school teaching. He thought that might be his calling, mm -hmm. and he started a church. And he said he said he had just a, maybe a, a dozen or so his first Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then he said within a year he was at 150 or so. Wow, yeah. And so, so you can sometimes see this spectacular growth. Yeah. Well, uh, so our strategy in church growth is uh, deep before wide, um, and meaning deep in community, um, deep in relationships, and deep primarily in the gospel. Because I think the gospel is the foundation for a good, solid community. And so... Uh, that's our strategy and just growing deep in relationships and and it's made evident right right away in the fact that 17 people are are able to kind of work to together and then the Lord is able to create relationships with other churches through those 17 people and well, big things happen we'll talk again soon keep me updated yeah yeah or quickly we get to or the the faster rather we get to that day which may have been a decade out otherwise. But now I think we're pushing it, and it could come all crashing down very soon in the next couple of years. That's a frightening thing, and you keep reading about what's going on with China and Russia, and you realize we're not even going to have the wherewithal to stop them. That's all she wrote. American dominance is gone, and the future means a greater, greater struggle for people because your standard of living is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. At some point, it would just be nice to see not only governments say no, but we'll have to be able to go along with them and understand that you know the gravy train's just got to stop. God willing, the creek don't rise. I'm back in this seat Monday morning between 6 and 10 a.m. Bill Colley with you on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 96 1 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Dan Bongino on the way following the news.